All right, good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is doing good this morning. Would you stand with me as we get our service started this morning? Days may be darkest, but your light is greater. You light our way, God, you light our way. When evil is rising, you're rising higher with power to save, with power to save. Good to see you and uh, glad that you are here. And if you're visiting with us, uh, we're certainly glad to have you. And if you haven't filled out a connection card before, uh, if you would fill that out and drop it in the plate, that would be great, as well as any prayer requests that uh, you have. Uh, everybody comfortable? Stand back up.
David Jane made a good choice in his wife. Say amen. Amen. Uh, amen. <laughs> that was very smart, David Jane. Very smart. Well, we're going to pray, and uh, we are we are going to pray for our president. And uh, we would pray for the president, uh, no matter which side of the aisle, kind of thing. Uh, we don't wish that on anyone. We are commanded in Scripture to pray for our leader, so we're going to pray uh, for his healing as well as all the rest of the people who have it. Uh, it is uh, unreal, and uh, so we want to lift that in prayer, and as well as many other needs. How many of y'all have had a great week? Who's had a horrible week? Oh, man. It's about half and half today. I hope you're not sick. Got to be careful which microphone you use, okay? You got to be careful of that stuff, so uh, uh, we, want, we want to stay safe. Uh, no matter what kind of week you've had, he's faithful, right? All right, let's pray. God, today we are thankful for who you are. God, we're thankful for loving us and caring for us. And God, we're thankful that you have a plan in all things. And God, for those who've had a difficult week, Father, we pray they would be encouraged today. Uh, and God, for those who've had a great week, uh, may they be encouraged to exalt you because you are certainly on the throne. God, we do pray for our nation today and our leaders. And so, God, we pray that uh, you would touch and heal. And, God, you would be with the president. God, be with Congress and our senators. And, God, so many who are sick. God, we pray uh, that you would touch and heal. And, God, grant them wisdom. And as always, God, we pray for your hand of blessing, your touch of revival on our nation. Now, God, we pray we would forget about all that's going on out there, and we would concentrate on you, be reminded how good and how faithful you are. And we pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Has anyone ever been through a hurricane before? Please raise your hand so I don't feel alone. Awesome. Um, first service didn't get it, and they just kind of sat there, and I was like, anyone? Please raise your hand. Okay. So, um, when I, lived, when I lived in Virginia in 2008, 2009, Hurricane Isabel came through, and right where we were in Virginia, it literally went exactly over like our city. And so there's wind, rain, hurricane, and then there's this little moment about 30 minutes where you're in the eye of the storm if you pass exactly over it. And it's kind of a weird feeling because it's like you've been through all this mess, and then there's like a reprieve for like 30 minutes and then you're like oh it's not over there's actually this whole like end left and I think about in our lives like when we go through storms or whatever it is and there's all this mess and then there's like a reprieve and then there's we know we're not over it yet and we know what's coming and it's at that time we're in the eye of the storm swirling all around us is trouble and trial and tribulation we know would you stand with me we know that He'll remain in control, and uh, through it all, whatever's swirling around us, uh, he's got it. So would you sing this with me? In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me. In the eye of the storm When the solid ground is falling now From underneath my feet Between the black skies and my red eyes I can barely see When I realize 
have been sold out by my friends and my family. I can feel the rain reminding me that in the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. Almighty God. 
that you are overcomer, defender of my heart. It's who you are, God of all, by your power. The oceans open wide, your fire falls down, heaven and
my eyes up to the hills? Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Praise you in the storm, and I'll lift my hands for you are who you are. No matter where I am, and every tear I've cried, you hold in your hands. You never left my side, and though my heart is torn, I will praise you in the storm. No, my heart is torn. Run through a few quick announcements. Um, Axis Thursday night. Axis, we will be meeting at the Parton's house, so we are excited about that. So uh, we will give you the details on that Thursday night at 6:30 uh, at the Parton's house. Um, also, real quick, I want to have the Davidsons please stand up. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Yes, yeah, stand on up. Awesome. Um, these guys they built um, a carpet ball set, which is if you've ever seen carpet ball. Our youth absolutely love it. They took the time last week to build that. So thank you guys very much. I told you I'd call you out today. I told them I would. Uh, also, everyone that's helped with the lighting and anything youth-related, um, we've averaged about 65 to 70 youth over the last few weeks. And so um, it has been greatly appreciated, all the help with getting all that uh, lighting and everything set up. Um, so thank you guys uh, very much. Uh, big announcement today, though. Caswell, you are 272 days away from our mission trip to Fort Caswell. And I know that seems like a lot, but it goes quick. You guys know. And your first payment is due in two weeks. I have the information sheets right here, all right, with the dates laid out, with the costs. So you guys, please see me for Camp, for camp Caswell. There was talk we were going to split the groups with middle school in high school, but we changed our minds, and we're just all going to go all in for one full week um, at the beginning. We will leave next year on Independence Day, so July the 4th um, next year. Uh, one thing we try to empower our youth to do is to invite others to come, and it, their spirit, you can really see it in our middle schoolers and high schoolers. They love to invite people uh, to come to youth. And one of, our, one of our favorite verses comes in John 1. And I'm just going to read just a little bit uh, from it uh, real quick. But in, in John 1, um, excuse me, uh, verse 43, this is when Jesus calls Philip and Nathaniel. So he calls Philip first, okay? And then Philip's like, hey, I'm going to go get my friend. I'm going to go tell my boy, right? that I want you to come with us. So he goes and he sees Nathaniel, and Nathaniel is like, what? Can anything good come from that town that Jesus is coming from? You know, basically kind of like just talking trash, basically. Nah, there's nothing good that's going to come out of Nazareth. And uh, Philip then turns it around and he says, come and see. And sometimes we use those three words to empower our youth to tell others, come and see, come and see. So please continue to encourage your youth to invite others to come here Wednesday nights from 6.30 to 8 to come and see. Um, this special young lady whose voice you heard earlier, her name is Haley Hartley. She's a senior at Wheatmore High School. Um, she's going to do the prayer over our offering this morning. So if our ushers could please come forward. All right, Haley. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Um, 
help this offering to be used in the best way possible, and God, help us to be open to the amazing service we're about to hear. Thank you. Amen. 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 This morning in the early service, we actually had a family here uh, that their kid had been invited to this church by uh, kids from Wheatmore. I said, you mean Trinity? He said, no, it, they, I go to Wheatmore. So uh, way to go, Wheatmore. And uh, what Dave said is very true. Uh, they do know how to invite, and certainly Wednesday night is uh, evidence of that. If you have your Bibles, let's go to Luke chapter 10. Uh, Luke chapter 10. Luke 10, and uh, we're going to start in verse 38. Luke 10, and we're going to start in verse 38. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. I love that. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. How many of you have animals? Anybody have a snake? Anybody have a snake? Anybody have one of those pet pigs, whatever they're called? Besides nasty, a pet, a pig. Anybody have a hamster, a rat? Two hamsters? Anybody have a ferret? Do they still make those? I've never, uh, I've never, I've not even, I, I thought COVID may have gotten all them, but uh, I don't, anybody, uh, anybody have a horse? Anybody have a horse? Nobody have, nobody have a horse. Anybody have a cat? Oh my God! Listen, anybody have these animals in your house? Oh my word! <laughs> Next homecoming, make sure you label your food. All right, make sure you label your food. Uh, anybody have a dog? Uh, here is a picture of uh, our dog, and uh, her name is uh, Bella, and. Uh, We've had her 10 or 11 years, and it's one of those situations. Uh, several years ago, we were on the road constantly uh, going back and forth, and um, it gets old, and the kids were very small, and uh, they said, if we ever get moved, uh, can we get a dog? And it was one of those sweet times that, you know, and I said, yeah, if the house ever sells, we'll get a dog. And uh, it was like yippy skippy. We sell the house, we get a dog, and we we bring this dog home in the middle of Christmas, in the middle of trying to pack uh, of all years for Santa to bring a dog. This was the year that it had to happen, and so we had the dog, and there was such excitement about Bella. Um, there was no arguing as to who was going to feed that dog. Everybody, I mean, there was a fight. Who gets to feed the dog? Who gets to give her a bath? Who gets to clean out the cage? Who gets to pick up the, you know, and all of that? And it's like, there was no issue. No issue at all. And that lasted for three whole days. <laughs> Anybody been there? Man. And she was cute. It was fun. Even I, for a couple hours, thought, this is a really cute little dog, you know, right here. And it's like, it's great. But it didn't last. As late as of late yesterday afternoon, there was much, uh, some high-raised voices in our house in regards to who's going to feed the dog. 
And who's going to get the dog water? And the cage needs cleaning. Suddenly, nobody wants the dog. I don't, this is, I, we don't like this dog. It is, nobody wants the dog. The excitement is gone. Excitement is gone. Nobody wants, nobody cares about that. Honestly, there are days I think if she was never fed again, I wonder who would even notice, right? That's the, that's the way it is some days. And it's like, there's no excitement. Not that quite that bad. I mean, come on now. Not quite that bad. Um, it's like the excitement is gone. It's over. And that's some people's animal experience. But it's a lot of people's Christian experience. There are people, and we see it all the time. Man, and there are people who they come to uh, they come to church, and uh, they believe in Christ and they follow Christ, and and they are so excited, and they are like they can't wait, and they don't even ask about wearing a mask. They don't ask about what time they have to come. They don't ask about what kind of music. They don't want to know is Morgan going to play the fiddle or the violin. They don't ask all that. They don't care. They've had an encounter with Jesus Christ, and they're excited to be here. There are those people. And then here's what I've After time, it's like, what are you going to be preaching on? Or we're going to have the song I like. What, what are the youth doing? What, what are they even heard this this week? Do you have any idea what they're going to feed the children this week and see? Hey, it's like, dear God, it's like, come on now. But when they first get, they don't care. They, they don't care. As a matter of fact, I've noticed when people, when they're excited about Jesus, they're not looking for a reason not to come. They're looking for a reason to come. And after they've been a Christ follower, supposedly for a little while, and they've been churched a little while, and they've been serving a little while, it's like they're sitting there just waiting for somebody to ask them to go play golf or somebody to go to the beach or somebody to go to the mountains or a football game, a little league ball game, a school PTA meeting, a bake sale, a colonoscopy. Some people prefer overcome the church, right? <laughs> huh? Not y'all, your further friends down the road, right? Not y'all. They're looking for a reason. And it's like it, it hadn't always been that way. I mean, there was a time where, wow, I can't wait till I get to go back to faith next week, right? And you're not looking at your watch to see when we're going to get out, right? I'd lie at this point. It's going to be awkward, right? You're not looking at your watch. At this point, it's like, hey, I can't wait. And suddenly it, it goes. It fades. It leaves. And we have these two extremes. It's like, why can't that excitement stay? Why does it have to go? How is it that at one point in my life I couldn't wait to go, and now I could care less if I ever go again, and it's like, oh, uh, how much longer, and this and that, and they look for an issue for a reason. What happened? And the reality is we have both scenarios here in this story. You have these two sisters, and you have one who is in the kitchen, and she's cooking. She's making dark side flounder, right? That's what they ate in the Bible. She's making dark side of flounder. She's got it. She's got the cornmeal. She's got the flour, the buttermilk, another secret ingredient I won't say out loud, but she's got all this stuff going, and she's fixing it, and she's got the hush puppies going and all that. And out of the corner of her eye, she looks in the living room, and there is her little sister, her millennial probably sister. She's sitting down. She's right there with Jesus doing I mean, you know, we know what kind of bumper sticker she has, right? Huh? <laughs> She's doing nothing, waiting on somebody else to feed her, serve her, fix her food. She's asleep, resting, and her sister's in the kitchen working, right? It's like, wow. And she's ill. And she's in that kitchen, and she's chopping those onions. You ever seen a mad cook? Dangerous, right? And the more she watches Mary out of the corner of her eye, the madder she gets. And finally, she's had enough. And she goes out there in the living room and tells Jesus, who we believe to be God, and says, hey, tell my sister that she needs to get up and help me. Right? If you're an oldest sibling, you've been there, right? Tell them to get up. Tell her to get up and come in this kitchen and help me. Now, is what Martha's doing good? Yes, they've got to eat. 
okay? Cooking food for the Son of God, that's a good thing, okay? Cooking, serving, getting the house, all of that is important. It's all a good thing, and that's what she's doing. And in her mind, she's like, you know what? I am working. I am serving. I'm doing it all for him. And he, Jesus, needs to tell her to get in here and help me do something for him. That's what she's thinking. Has Martha always been that way? Probably not. I think at one point, Martha was in the kitchen cutting up whatever, onions. I think at one point, she probably had a smile on her face. That's for Jesus. Little baby sister, and she's so cute over there. and That's sweet. She's loving on Jesus, and he's talking to her, and they're having a sweet little time. That's so sweet. And she cooking, smiling, takes it over there. All right, little Mary, come on. Bring a little Jesus and let's eat. She's gone from that. Did Jesus tell her to get in here? Enough of that. Get in here. What happened? What happened to that servant's heart? What happened to that passion? I'm doing this because I love it. You know, the reality is if you're doing something you like to do, you don't need it. You don't want a lot of help. You're okay if the whole world doesn't stop and come and help you if you're enjoying it. But when you're not, that's when the focus changes. You see, the reality is out of the corner of her eye when she's in there chopping the onions, she missed Jesus and saw her sister. And if you want to lose your passion real quick, you get your eye off him and put it on the person sitting next to you. I can guarantee, and that's true in church people, and it's like, and I said, or there are some church people who work themselves to death. We have people in this church who we have to say, stop, that's enough. You got to take a break. You need some rest. And then we have some people walking with lead in their pants, they just plop down everywhere they go, right? Not y'all, the early service. We don't say the early service did that, all right? <laughs> Some of you can't light a fire under them, right? All the people who work said amen, right? And it's like you can't get them to do anything, and it's like the people who are serving, they're exhausted and wearing out. And for those of you who serve, here's the danger. If you watch lead pants too long, you'll get discouraged yourself, and you'll get ill at them. You'll get aggravated at them, and it won't be long. You'll be praying, God, get them, tell them, get them, need some help. That's what happened to Martha. Her focus got diverted. Instead of the joy and who she was doing it for, she got her eyes on, on the one who, who wasn't doing what she was. And the reality is Martha wanted Jesus to make Mary like her. Martha the servant, Martha the worker, Martha the, the one who is, who's getting everything ready, the preparation. The reality is, if I have to pick the two between church members, a Martha or a Mary, wow. Matter of fact, if you're a man and you're picking somebody to marry, a man, by the way, and you're picking a Mary or a Martha to marry, amen? The Mary, who are you going to choose? Lead pants Mary or Martha? Huh? Martha, right? You want somebody who's going to do something, right? It's the same way in church, right? Listen, we're not looking, we're not really looking for a bunch of Marys to come sit on the couch a while, right? We want somebody going to do something, help serve so we can reach more people and all that. And it's like, that's what we want. But here's what blows my mind. She goes to Jesus. She has a basically a request, and she says, hey, come on now. Tell her to be like me. Help me serve. We're doing this all for you, by the way. I need some help. And Jesus says, Martha. And really, he didn't say it twice in the original language. It was really like a Martha kind of thing, is the way it really reads. What she's doing is a big deal. What she's doing is not going to be taken away from her. What she's doing, really, Martha, is more important than what you're doing. Martha was consumed with the performance. 
She's back there. She wants Jesus to know what she's doing. And she wants her sister to know what she's doing. The reality is God cares about what you do in the private, not what you post on Facebook. That's what he cares about. She makes this huge announcement. And Jesus says, no way, you got it wrong. What she's doing is a big deal. Martha was consumed with the performance, and Mary was content to be in his presence. There's a huge difference. And today, it is so easy to get caught up in the performance. We care so much about what people think, don't we? I don't care. Just look at your pictures on Facebook. Hair fix. I mean, it's like the 2020 glamour shot, right? It's like we care so much. And that thinking has transferred even to our Christianity. And we've got so obsessed with the performance, so obsessed with doing the right thing, so obsessed with serving that we forgot the one we're doing it for. You can... Church will work you to death, by the way. Christianity will work you to death. It's exhausting to do the right thing, right? It's exhausting to love people. It's exhausting to constantly turn the other cheek. It's exhausting to constantly hold the door. It's exhausting not to blow that horn, right? It's just exhausting. It's tiring to do the right thing. And it wears us out. It's exhausting to serve and it's it's tiring to one more time and it's so tiring and over time we've left the god at the couch we've gone to the kitchen and we're busy doing good stuff this is very important they had to eat all right it's very important But when the focus shifts from the man, God, to the woman, the reality is that, according to Jesus, it becomes null and void. This is not not right, Martha. you you got to regroup. Now, here's what I know. If I said, who in here is tired? Oh, I'm so tired. I'm just uh, tired. Some of you come in, you're just so tired. You're either tired or hungover, and I hope it's tired, right? It's like, uh, what's going on? You're You're just exhausted. And let's be real, sometimes church makes us more tired. And sometimes hearing, there was almost 16 minutes of announcements today, counting all that was said across the board. And it's all stuff of, hey, you need to do it. Bring candy, do a trunk, which is going to take some time. Bring food for CIA, go to the prayer meeting, all of these things. It's exhausting. It's tiring. Life just tiring and being a Christian is no different and when that happens we get distracted I think it's verse 40 he he said you know you're distracted Martha you're just you're just distracted and the more distracted we become the more tired we become and the more ill we become Martha was was ill and our passion for who it's all about it just, it levels off. So today you say, well, I'm just, I'm not at all excited. I'm not excited to be here. I'm here because Granny made me. Granny's going to cook lunch for me if I come to church. Or it's like Mama made me, Daddy made me, whatever. And it's, and it's like, no excitement. It's okay. Listen, I don't wake up every Sunday morning going yippee skippy. Right? And sometimes we just do it because we're, we're supposed to. But I'm going to tell you, I do know this. If you'll get in his presence just a few seconds and forget it's about you and forget about the other people, that perspective will change real quick. It'll change. It'll change. And so today, if you're spiritually exhausted, normally when this story is preached on, the pastor is saying, we've got to have some more Marthas. There's stuff to be done. That's only what's said. But today, Martha's going to be the bad guy. 
And Mary is going to be the good one. I think maybe we need a little bit, a few more Marys. So you know what? Yes, there's stuff to do. But right now, I just need to be in his presence. So this morning, if you're exhausted and you're like, I can't even remember the last time I was excited to sing. I can't remember the last time I was excited to pray or read the Bible. or I can't remember the last time I got in my car saying I can't wait to get there the whole way there. If you can't remember that, it could be the zeal has gone, the passion has gone. And we tend to blame it. We blame it on, well, it's that church or, or it's those people. Or if they would sing that one song, I would get in his presence. I mean, that's the dumbest thing in the world, right? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Now what you need is to chill out, get your eyes off Mary, put your eyes on him, and just get his presence. So this morning, let's stand. And I want you just to say, you know, how do I really feel? I mean, if I'm rating my enthusiasm right now of serving Jesus, it's like, where is it? You're a negative five, ten plus. We got both scenarios here in the Bible. One super excited, can't wait to get in his presence, and one is so ill because she is. It's okay. God's a big God. He can take it. But if you want to be in his presence he's not hiding in a closet somewhere he's like right there at your heart's door saying you know what if you want to be with me hey draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you if you want it God today we pray God that as believers God as Christ followers Father we would stop and examine our heart as to the why we're doing what we're doing And God, maybe we need to just spend some time, God, just in your presence. God, for the fire to be rekindled, for the zeal to come back. God, to just stop and say, is my attitude getting a little like Martha? God, help us to be more like Mary for time. Heads bowed and eyes closed. The altar is open. You can come pray if you want to. If you want to sit in your seat, uh, feel free to do that. But it's like you said, there's one thing that's needed, and that's to be in his presence.